the Mike Wolverton show and on podcasting. Thanks for joining today. So today I'm going to discuss uh, budgeting 101. Alright, so I've got my YouTube chat up. And one second, I'm going to get Facebook up. So both of those are live. I have the chat. So if you have any questions, you can chat on YouTube or Facebook and I'll answer those. But yeah, today's show is going to be on budgeting and kind of like um, where to start and kind of some like details behind it. So first, I'll start by sharing that 78% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. And so that tells me that people are not budgeting. Um... And then here also, because um, no one would set themselves up with a budget that's only good for the weekend, you know, um, you know, good for the Friday, Saturday, and party up, and then you turn around, and then it's Monday, and then you have real bills too, and, you know, people wouldn't set themselves up for that. And, you know, wonder how to pay the bills for the rest of the week. And so... Um, since, let's see, since this is like a biblical approach to teaching about finances, um, here in, let's see, Luke 14, 28 to 31 kind of explains some of this, uh, details. And so in this, um, chapter, or in these few lines, Luke 14, uh, 25 through 35, it's, um, titled the cost and it's kind of talking about um, the cost and so I'll read line let's see Luke 14 28 through 31 or through 30 I'm sorry for which of you if he wants to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost to see if he has enough to complete it otherwise when he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish everyone who sees it will begin to ridicule him, saying this fellow began to build, but was not able to finish. And so what's happening there is, you know, why would you, if you translate this to a budget, you know, why would you um, create a bad budget? And then those around you ridicule you, you know, mock you, saying, hey, um, in this translation, in the Bible, they're talking about building. So it's, hey, you began to build, but was not able to finish. And so you want to have like a sound foundation that you're building off of. And so you can do this, um, you know, all these money things. You can purchase house and you can um, invest and save and you can do all these. But if you're not like rooted in a firm foundation and so... Um, with that being said, my, my first show and, you know, I'm, I'm new to all this, so I'm learning like a good structure, but I definitely should have began with the budget first, because if you don't have that foundation, then all this other stuff is just like in one ear out the other, or you may apply it, but in the wrong order and you're not going to, you know, get the furthest, the fastest. And so, um. I want people to be able to get the furthest, the fastest, and also do it the right way. So, alrighty, and so this all kind of like explain the budget. So, like first, you want to start um, with your take-home pay for the month, and so you know first you have to start with the income. So you figure out, hey, what's my income, and you go through everything. Um, you know, you and your spouse's job, if you have one, um, you know, whoever's working, 
you put that into the income. If you have a side business, you put that into the income. Um, if you're not sure of an exact amount every month, then you'd want to um, kind of plan like, hey, what's my average for the year? And so divide that average by 12, and then you'll have your monthly. And that way you have like a baseline of, okay, this is what I'm um, roughly going to take home. And if you do have that irregular budget, then when you um, you have like a, a low spending month, then you save that money so that when you have um, a high spending month, then you have those um, you have those reserved funds for then. Alrighty. And so once you have your income, um, you know, through your day job, side businesses, side hustles, um, if you are selling stuff that month, so you have your budget, then you're going to go down. Oh, I'm sorry. You have your income, then you're going to do your budget. So at the top of the line, you start with um, giving. And so... Uh, let's see different kind of charities tithing uh, charity and offerings and that will be about 10 to 15 percent and you know i kind of based this off of personal um religious foundation and so i kind of mentioned like that's what the show's teaching um like god's way of handling money so just you know, you start with the 10 to 15% on that. Then the next one would be saving because the next step is you want to pay yourself. <clears throat> so let's see. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So if you're saving for like an emergency fund to have, um, if you're saving for like those up and down months like I was talking about, um, maybe you're saving for retirement or possibly even saving for, um, kids college or just, you know, kind of like a big expense coming up. And so that should be another 10 to 15%. Well, uh, the next is your housing. And so, you know, you want to put your mortgage or your rent, taxes, uh, maintenance and repairs, and then if you have like a HOA dues. Then after the housing, let's see, you do um, utilities. So electricity, gas, water, <laughs> uh, trash, phone, internet, and cable bill. And that should be 5 to 10%. Oh, and I'm sorry, I forgot to mention the percentage on the housing is 25 to 35 um so here we want to keep that to like 25 percent um when buying a house i would apply the rules of um 25 percent take home pay for the mortgage so i guess like you could incorporate all these like associated fees like taxes repairs with it but um that's probably like you know not really realistic, but um, try to keep that take home pay, um, the mortgage within that 15 year, 25% take home pay. And that will kind of, you know, help for the other things associated with housing. Next is going to be your food, so groceries, and um, possibly restaurants, depending on how the budget is going. And that should be five to ten. Oh, I'm sorry, five to fifteen percent. Next is clothing. Let's see, adults, children, and possibly laundry. Two to seven percent. And so, if you're like you know trying to squeeze as much money as possible for savings, or maybe you're trying to get out of debt, and uh, do these different kind of things and you know possibly you um you want to kind of like take the um coaching with me 
the one-on-one -on -one coaching then you know you're trying to do like the best you can with money so the clothing you know for a, a certain period of time might be zero because you know you just use what you have just to get you into um you know until you get like out of debt for example and so it's just like how deep will you cut and also like the restaurants so uh, the next one is transportation so this is going to be your gas and oil which those prices are going up uh repairs and tires license and taxes and then you um depending on like your situation with your car uh car replacement and then if you do have a um a car loan right now then you want to put that into your debt and then you want to work to pay that off as fast as possible using the debt snowball and so debt snowball is you pay um, your smallest the largest debt and um, based on the amount not the interest rate because we're trying to like pay it off as fast as possible and so the interest rate you know your annual interest rate might not even be a factor um, depending how fast you can pay it off and so you know if you can pay off all your debt in a year or two that interest is going to be very minimal but as you go through it and you're paying off um hundred dollar credit card here 200 the next one uh 300 medical debt and then like you know as you work up you're getting to um the bigger debts but you're also having like these small victories and celebrations that are moving you forward and progressing and that should be 10 to 15 percent for transportation so the next one is medical and health uh, five to ten percent and this is your medication doctor bills dentist um, you know different kinds of specialists and anything else related there and so that's just medical and health now the next one will cover health insurance because it's talking about insurance so this one's 10 to 25 percent so this is life insurance health insurance homeowner renter insurance auto insurance disability insurance identity theft and long-term care and just real quick i'll kind of like go over these so if you don't currently have life insurance that's like a very big priority to go and get right now because anything could happen and um i have like personal stories with that of um a young lady that was a friend of mine they um didn't have life insurance um her parents and so you know that kind of left the strand on the family and then she and that was with um one of her parents and then the second one passed and they also didn't have life insurance so that's that's definitely something very serious to you know um, have at the top of the list priority if you don't have it now because um you know like just being straightforward um we have a life but we also have an end to it and you know you want to be able to take care of your family um and so like this is actually being a blessing to them just in case something does go wrong and it's it's not to say oh when you fill out these papers and stuff that um bad things are going to happen that's that's not what it is it's just preparing for in case something tragic does happen and you know so if you have um anyone that depends on you whether it's kids um maybe you're taking care of a um um anyone really parent even you know if anyone relies on your income then you want to get life insurance um you know it's just a good insurance 
that's what insurance is for to protect you in um, situations and then so the next one is health insurance which um, that can be pretty expensive but you know you want to try to get your health insurance whatever means is uh, best for you let's see I'm not a, a big I don't know much about health insurance so I don't really want to go deep into something I don't know about but um if anyone had any comments of like I, I know for sure I hear people talk about the uh, HSA plan because you can um it's like a triple whammy of saving tax advantage plan and so you can save into it tax free and then also when you like use the HSA card for health reasons um or health expenses rather you can um it's also tax free so there's a big benefit on that but um and then i guess i'd recommend a high deductible plan so you know if you're kind of working um to get out of debt and you know kind of do this plan and my plan kind of you know stems from dave ramsey's plan if you're working on that then you you know you want to have emergency fund in place uh, of a thousand dollars before you start paying off your debt and then you start paying off your debt you know um you kind of have a little cushion to not have to like rely on a credit card if something comes up and then after you pay off all your debt you want to increase it to you know a very recommended three to six months of expenses um emergency fund so that you know when things come up you're able to uh, pay for them and you know high deductible plans save you money um monthly and you know um i'm trying to think of how to describe this i believe if you're um you know pretty healthy and you don't have a lot of um health expenses then a high deductible plan works for you because um you know you can cover the um the small like doctor visits that happen if they're very you know if you're um you know fairly healthy and then if you're um trying to think of the words here i believe it'd be beneficial too if you um were having like a serious uh, medical illness because then you're only paying the deductible and then the insurance is covering the rest so i believe that's how it works um but i'm not like i said um really all this stuff is just my opinion so you know take it for what it's worth but um health insurance i'm definitely not um an expert on that or even really knowing too much of the basics but i just know you know personally so the next insurance is home renter or renter's insurance so you want to have that in case of an emergency um to protect your home and even if you're renting you want to get that because renter's insurance i remember when i was in college it was super super cheap and it covered um I want to say my exact policy covered like 50,000 maybe up to 100 on um personal things and any damage any property stolen those kind of things so or even if there was like a a natural disaster it would protect against that too so definitely want to have that auto insurance this is a big one that a lot of us miss and um, kind of like the big national stat of 78% of Americans living paycheck to paycheck. Um, I would have to look this one up, but I think I've heard numbers of like majority numbers, like 50, 53%, something like that of most, um, Americans have all their insurance, but they don't check it, um, per like period. So if you're doing like a six month policy, 
you want to like shop around at the end of the six months with a um i believe they call it a captive agent and so they're not like just attached to one um it might be called individual agent but i think it's captive and so like they're gonna shop around and look for the best deal for you or you can even do this yourself and like me i was able to save I believe it was like 150 uh, bucks per month and so like that cut my policy like in half or probably like even way below half and it's because i just like did the research of just typing in the quote for every company i could think of and even some like new ones coming into my area and um you know not as um commercialized i guess because all, that's what i think of the other insurance most of us have the ones that are on the commercial and we're paying we're sponsoring those commercials by paying like the high premiums so shop around and see what you can get the best deal with um each end of the policy oh the next one disability insurance so also like talk to a uh, insurance agent through this and um like i don't have any sponsors or anything but i would recommend xander insurance and you type in like oh they have like a little checklist and it'll tell you like hey this is a critical insurance that you need or here's some that you know um that you either have or that you don't that aren't such a big deal but definitely the ones that i'm listing out here life insurance health insurance homeowner slash renter auto insurance disability insurance identity theft and long-term care um they'll definitely be able to shop around and find the best deal for you there and based on your criteria that you have so that's a um, uh, xander insurance let me double check this z-a-n-d-e-r all right so with that disability insurance you know you want to get um i believe it's 60 percent can't find this right now oh i was on life insurance i'm like i know that seemed odd yeah so 60 percent. okay so i was right so you want to you know have around 60 percent of your monthly income um with the disability insurance that you're going for with a minimum of at least a five year benefit period and then um longer if you can afford it as long as you can would be um you know to age 65 if you can would be the best but um you know check with your coverage and see like what you can afford uh, and check with your budget as well and then the elimination period you also want to take the longest um as possible too because you can depend on that emergency fund in your budget like I was talking about in the event of something happening and so like really like we we rely on these things as like free money so much of the time but um and like take it if you can but like if you can avoid um you know making claims on different kinds of insurance like all the insurance for example then you're you're gonna save money in the long term because if you have a 300 dollars repair uh like a windshield for example 
that will raise your rates over time. But if you just go and pay for it out of pocket with your emergency fund, then you're you're going to save a lot in the long term because your rates aren't going to go up. So kind of same with these insurance, you know, don't use it until you absolutely need it. And you want to extend those policies that way. That way you can, um, you know, save and win with money the best you can. So uh, the next one is identity theft. So here, since, um, you know, I'm kind of teaching like the debt free life, um, you know, don't get just identity theft through like credit lenders and uh, different kind of like, I know they have different kind of ID thefts and stuff like that. Um, I would also like recommend with Xander as well to like, um, to, you know, look at their, uh, identity theft policy there because theirs is like all encompassing and it's like real identity theft. They're going to, um, track different kind of things that they don't do with the other ones because they're just tracking your credit. And so this one's going to like track dark web, all kind of, all kind of things. And so, you know, you can read up on their information and uh, see what it encompasses. But, you know, in the case of ID theft happening, you, you know, you want to um, protect your identity that way. So the last one. So that was like the major six, um, long-term care, if it's needed, then, um, you know, you want to shop and see if you need insurance there. And so that whole insurance is going to be 10 to 25%, like I mentioned. So let's see, the next one is personal. So this is all kind of stuff here. This is where you include, um, just kind of like anything personal. Uh, subscriptions is a big one. Um, let's see. Um, I guess here's where you would include tuition. Um, you know, like your side money for fun activities and things like that for the month. You know, you can set aside a little bit of money for that and also like miscellaneous things. And so here you want that to be five to ten percent. Um let's see, five to ten percent on recreation. This is like entertainment or vacation. So um I kinda take the stance here that you know, if you're still like if you're focused on getting out of debt and you're trying to go on vacation, then you're not really focused. And so I would say, you know, get that debt cleaned up and then you can go celebrate a vacation. Um, that's what I did myself. Um, I guess I haven't really shared my personal story on here yet, but, um, you know, I took 15 months to pay off uh, roughly $25,000. And, um, once I did that, I went on a vacation with um with my girlfriend and we went to dave ramsey's headquarters to do a debt-free scream there and so you know you definitely get to be a part of something bigger as you um get rid of the debt and so that brings us to the last one which is five to ten percent of your debt so here you're going to list card payments credit cards student loans um personal loans and so, like, this is everything but the mortgage. Um, and I did forget to mention this, but this is like a zero uh, base balance. I'm sorry, a zero balance uh, budget. And so you want it to be, you want your take on pay minus your, all the different categories that I went over to equal zero. So you want to, like, have a spending plan for all of your money at the beginning of each month, you know, for the whole month. And, you know, that way you'll stick to your plan. If you have to adjust things, you do so, um, you know, in the budgeting tools that you have. They have different apps and those kind of things. 
um personally i use every dollar budget and you know it'll help track everything but there's tons of um, good budgets and even, even if you take a pen and paper out you, know, you can do all these things all the um categories and stuff that i listed out Let's see. Um, also, after you do the budget, you can do what's called a allocated spendings plan. And so this is where you kind of like list out, okay, this is all of my bills. These are um, what's budgeting, but I'm going to budget for it. And then um, when the bills do, so, you know, you'll have like due dates and those kind of things um to list out and then you know if you have multiple of them then you'll list out one and you'll list out the remaining portion for that and then you'll um next to it you'll make the next one okay this is the second bill for it so for example child care so you have you pay it weekly and so you have four and uh I'm going to get roasted for this one because I don't know, like, the cost of this. And this is probably way uh, a low ball for it. But, I don't know, say it's 100 bucks uh, per week. And <laughs> I'll take on the roast because that, that does seem kind of low when I'm saying it. But say it's 100 for per week. So, um, you know, you put for the first, for the eighth. Oh, we got the 15th and the, what would it be, like the 22nd. And so, you know, you put out all those dates and you put budget 100 for each week. And so your total is 400 for the month. And so, you know, you would just budget um, in this allocated spending plan of when the due dates are and how much. And then next to it, you would put the remaining balance of 300 for the first week. And then, you know, you budget the next 300 and remaining after that second week with 200 and so on. Not really, so I think that about sums it up. Does anyone have any questions? Comments, feedback, anything like that? And just like real quick, I'll kind of hit home on everyone so that we can um, reflect some of the data and the truths behind what the average American does with their finances. And um, hopefully this will like inspire, you know, people who do want to say, oh, what's this um, budgeting stuff and what's this pay off debt and um, become debt free. So, you know, I'll kind of go over what that matters average American has and also some other stats that I want to tie into this but the um, first the average household income per the Census Bureau the US Census Bureau of 2017 was $59,039 so about $60,000 um, let's see oh, this is uh, Nerd Wallet 2017 the average consumer debt, so credit cards, is about sixteen thousand. Auto loans, about twenty nine thousand. Student loans, about fifty one thousand. And then mortgages, about one hundred eighty thousand. Excuse me. So the, oh, the next one is Nerd Wallet as well. Twenty seventeen total consumer debt in U.S. Twelve point seven three trillion. So. 
Let's see if I can zoom in here real quick. So you have mortgages is 8.63 trillion student loans. One point three four trillion. So this is twenty seventeen. So that's actually old data. I think now it's one point seven. It could even be one point nine. I know they just um Congress and all they just passed the bill, the next stimulus, I guess. And then I think it was one point nine trillion. So I may be getting that mixed up. But the student loans is either the same one point nine trillion or it could be one point seven trillion. So. Um, that should tell you something there. Auto loans, 1.17 trillion. Um, other, so this might be like personal and just and medical and things. Um, you know, just anything inside that other is 830 billion. And credit cards is 764 billion. So, and this is all 2017. So this is uh, pretty outdated. And so... You know the credit card industry um we owe them 764 billion so their industry is huge and you know we've kind of propped them up to be that um again let's see career builder 2017 78 percent of people live paycheck to paycheck your average credit card apr is 16.14 percent which is absurd and ridiculous um, let's see. So this is from uh, Dave Ramsey's FBU member survey, 2017. Seven out of ten uh, couples do not budget consistently. And then approximately, uh, this is Career Builder, 2017. Approximately 66% of Americans would struggle to pay for an a thousand dollar emergency. And so that's where like. Um, Dave Ramsey's playing kind of his baby steps, um, is what I recommend because, um, an overwhelming majority, like 66% is a lot. That's two thirds. That's every, um, that's, that's literally walk down three houses or pick three houses in your neighborhood, point at two of them and say they can't afford a thousand dollars. And so... That's why it's called the starter emergency fund for his baby step one, because it's just a starter. It's just saying, hey, we don't have to rely on debt if something comes up. And yeah, it's a very small one, but it's this is so that we don't have to rely on anything major. And since, you know, I'm a person of faith, I believe if you're working towards the right steps, that blessings will come. And sure, like failures and um, tragedies are going to come as well. But if you're setting yourself up for success, then, you know, I personally believe like God will bless you um, through that journey and you'll be able to, um, you know, keep having success even if you have a setback. And so that, you know, that baby step one start emergency fund of a thousand dollars puts you um, in that category of like being able to cover something small when most people can't. And so, you know, and hopefully we can change the numbers on that substantially. Um, and then like with his baby step two, pay off all your debt, except the mortgage, you know, that kind of like put you in a, a weird category too and excuse me you know we kind of like um the financial desire that i talk about you know we want a desire to be like um to get to true success and so we're 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 gonna have to do things differently than what normal people do quote unquote and like what the average American and all this data that I just went over do. And so, you know, oh, Dave Ramsey's baby step two, pay off all your debt except the mortgage. That's going to like put you in a position to 
have less leverage um, onto you because like the Bible says the borrower is slave to the lender and so like you're operating at what they tell you to do when you owe them um, or when you owe anyone really and so you want to get to the point of where like your income um, is going towards things that you truly desire and want to have and like want it to go towards and so basically that just opens it up to like you have freedom you have um, financial freedom and you're able to have that financial desire of like striving for success and then achieving it as well so let's see So I think that's kind of most of it here. Um, yeah, does anyone have any um, questions? Let's see. All right, looks like we don't. So um, also this will, you know, you can watch the replay here on YouTube or Facebook and then you can I'm also going to upload this to the podcast and there you'll be able to, um, you know, that's on anchor and, um, I believe the, the link is anchor.fm slash Mike Wolferton show. And then there you can watch it on Spotify um, and a bunch of other podcast sources. Um, let's see, I also have Google Podcasts. The only one I don't have right now is Apple. For some reason, I'm still waiting on that one to go through. Um, I'll have to talk to the support team later today and get that one going. But yeah, you can check out the podcast there as well. Uh, this one will be titled The Mike Wolverton Show, uh, Season 1, Episode 3, and it'll be titled um, Budgeting 101. And so this kind of, you know, just walks over some of the budgeting that I was talking about. I forgot to hit record again, but I think I can pull it from YouTube onto there. So, uh, anyways, thanks for stopping by. Uh, like or comment. If you liked the video, if you liked it, comment if you have any questions, and I'll answer them in the next one. You can also subscribe. And then, right now, since I'm in the early phases, uh, sharing it to people you know. Say, hey, look what this guy's talking about. This is kind of cool. Or if, um, you know, someone's in need of this information, and you feel like they could benefit from it, share with them as well. That would help a ton, so... Thank you. Everyone have a blessed day, and uh, I'll see you on Wednesday. So real quick, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time.